Hello, welcome back. Let's continue with the web, GoodX web training. Um, we have now covered the appointments and diary administration. And if you go to the learning center, this was the um, logging, the appointments, and the diary administration. This is where we have booked new patients and existing patients and out of office bookings. We talked about how to import your files uh, from the, the, the medical aid. So this is the validation, dependent data, new data input and benefits check. And you can do a benefits check only with discovery. And please make sure that reception always imports a new patient that walks in in the practice and always validates existing patients. When we get to billing, we do not want to see uh, um, rejections because of invalid dependent codes or membership numbers. That should have been managed and completed correctly with the import and validation functions at the reception. So now we're going to start with our clinical information. So that's from the clinical type in the right hand side. Under, under manual you will see the categories for medical estrogen examination scripts. Just click on the necessary links and follow the processes here on the clinical site. Um, I'm going to cover now all the options available and the process that flows through the clinical uh, settings of the system and show you a few clinical events and what we mean by that and show you also the clinical history. So this is typically been done by the doctor, treating provider, depending on who's doing this, dialysis or technicians or specialists or whoever it might be. And uh, this is the information that will be covered uh, 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 covered and um, collected from all the tests and procedures and treatments on the patient before or during the treatments and even after um, for instance our pathology and something like that so let's go back to our current website so we have done now the uh, booked we've done the arrived and now all these green bookings currently shows me this is the uh, patients that are ready so now with this patients we can start the clinical information uh, the D should also be green it means reception should have uploaded in all the IDs and membership cards remember that's part of the paperless structure get that into place uh, make sure reception is uh, uploading whatever they need before we go to the next point if there's no receptionist, it just depends on who is the technician or the person involved and how we collect information where it must go. So now the patient is ready and we start with the clinical. So here on the right hand side with the sidebar, we talk about the clinical option here. The clinical history on the right hand side is to see all the clinical events that took place on this patient on a daily, weekly basis. So anything that I've done on the clinical sign of this patient, I can view this in a clinical history to see what has happened to the patient up till today's date. So the moment I do click on clinical, it will open up and it will be a blank screen in the left hand side and you will see where at the top we're currently standing on clinical case. On the right hand side we will see the patient that I'm currently dealing with. Here will be the list of more than one dependent, so make sure we're currently standing on the right patient and then um, you will see his age and uh, his name and even here uh, remember that you can even take pictures of your patient at reception so then you will be able to actually see the image of the patient uh, if you want to go that far in identifying your patients then we talk about easy events this is our uh, event from our library that's just a shorter list this is the most actively commonly used events for um, your practice so please make sure from your FCL that this is set up uh, otherwise you every time need to do the drop down on the list from the library and this is a quick easy button access to the, the clinical events that you will be using every day so now for a general practice we have a general examination and then a quick note that's my typical clinical notes from a doctor's perspective but it just depends on the practice that you're dealing with because if you're dialysis for instance there will be a dialysis event or a dialysis flowchart event that you can access so every discipline can have a unique 
event will form and we need to be aware of that when you start working on a good X web so we can make that also as an easy event for you. So I will start with the, the clinical from here. So we start usually here at the top with my medical history. So my medical history is not part of my events. The reason for that is the medical history will take place the first time with a patient and it will be there forever until you make changes on his clinical information and that's the his allergies and his chronic diseases that you will see here on the right hand side for instance um, this is an existing patient so i can immediately see his allergies his penicillin uh penicillin uh, penicillin sorry about corn and chocolate for instance and then he's got chronic diseases if that is loaded you can see his chronic disease like hypertension and even the medication that is currently on and then his general health will just say no he's not smoking alcohol exercise or recreational drugs that is all filled in here at the medical history and this information will be there permanently and will change and update in the future as necessary that's what that's why it's not seen as a clinical event on the right hand side these clinical events are triggered every time you see the patient or the patients come for treatment and procedures then you trigger a clinical event to capture the clinical information about the patient at that moment for that specific treatment or option that i want to perform on that patient so if this is a new patient i'm going to start this again let's go to mr khat naidu that we've loaded now today so i'm going to click on clinical and the first thing I start with to see, okay, there's no clinical events done before, it's new, first time, and I start with my medical history. The medical history is usually also a form that the patient fills in when they start uh, walking into your practice or when you deal with that patient. And uh, this can now be captured electronically on the system. With my GC, we even now allow the patient to specify his allergies and when I fill it in my IGC, it can also import directly into the system. So we start with my medical history on heart. And general history is where we say whether he's smoking, is he ex smoker, is he drinking? No, is he doing exercise? Yes, and no recreational drugs. Family history, there is, for instance, depression in the family, and there was heart disease. Uh, you can also now obviously put in extra notes on this and, and so as I fill it in I can com complete this section I'm done with the general history and family history so I go to the top right corner again and I complete that section now you will see that will turn to green now I go to my chronic I open that up search for chronic conditions now I can type in for instance hypertension it's got essential hypertension and now I can specify what medication the patient is currently using so by clicking here on add script item I can actually say that he is using a specific medication and I can put in for instance here microdot um, select items and I can also load the dosage here so in other words the signata or the uh, uh, directions and how he's going to take this medication and because I'm learning this actually as a script item I can now start issuing this as part of my scripts from here on if I'm doing scripts on these patients for once it's not doing scripts it's still a nice way of capturing the medication so I know what medication this patient is currently on for his hypertension at this moment Fill in everything as required, the date it must start, and then I complete the chronic conditions. Now I go to my allergies, and I will select, okay, he's, he's allergic to penicillin, and he's allergic to gluten, and any other chemical that's, or ingredients in any other kind of medication. If you do not see it under the drug class, or natural, you most probably will find it under the chemical allergies like aspirin for instance here and now i can make a specific note on that here's also a warning message whatever i put in patient is very allergic you can put that in and it will show at the top side again in the future there with the allergies and essential chronic diseases and if i put in a little ticket it's important it will always pop up when i go into this the, the, the most functions of this patient in the future so the doctor or technician can always see 
what this patient is allergic for. Again, fill in everything, yes, allergies has been completed, and then you press the complete button. Treatment history, here I can add previous treatments like previous dialysis or previous, previous chemotherapy or any other previous treatments this patient was on by clicking under plus. You can specify the treatment, the date it started, the date it ended, where you got the treatment and any notes on that specific treatment. Also any previous uh, uh, theatres, operations, you can say yes, you had a hip replacement and putting the date when the replacement took place and what was the doctor, who was the doctor involved and that sense and what hospital did this take place and any specific note that is important on that specific operation that might be important. Again, once you've completed everything you click on complete and then that section is done. Now you can do for the gynae, you can put in your post, uh, past pregnancies by putting the dates when the first pregnancy or the second pregnancy was and, and so forth and fill in all the details if you do not need those details just complete that section anyway occupational is just uh, basic information that you can just capture to make it easier and also when you're done you just complete it now I've completed all my medical history so on the right uh, side at the top you will see now my allergies are showing Nice penicillin and aspirin and gluten, and you can see he says on an essential hypertension. He's currently taking Microdol for his hypertension. He's not a smoker, he does not drink, he exercise, and no drugs. And the patient is very allergic. So, this is just a quick note that I can access now from there. And this will stay on this file. And anytime I want to edit on this, I just go back to the medical history, reopen that section, edit it, and complete that section again. Now that I've loaded all of that, now you can see I'm focused on my medical history. Now I can just switch back to the clinical case and I can start now with a clinical event. Or I can just switch back to medical history again if I want to update again and go back to clinical case when I'm done. Please just make sure you complete any of the sections that you want to work with. Now I'm on my clinical case, so usually the next step in this, and if you look at our manual, as well, we talk usually first of our clinical history, and from our clinical history, we move now to our short description GPE, but to our general examination. This is typically done by our GPs and nurses and uh, practices where we use triage, where we can also accommodate that. It just depends on your speciality on what will be your first next event. You will always start with the medical history. From the medical history, will you then jump to your first event that you will trigger if this is the first consultation it will be a certain event if this is a treatment that you're doing it will be your specific treatment for instance in this scenario there could be a botox treatment there could be a cardio assessment there could be a colonoscopy there could be dialysis um, there could be an emr a gastroscopy there could be a gynecologist form this depends on your specific discipline that we will activate this depending on your needs. Obviously, when you log into GoodX the first time, you will only see the limited, limited version of this library that's only needed that you will be using only for you. So you will only see your specific forms. You will not have access to the other forms. That's not part of your discipline. That's why these quick events are so easy to see and use. This is the ones you will be using every day. So make sure that your form that is applicable is loaded as an easy event so you can have quick access to it. In this scenario, we're going to show you the general examination. It's just to give you an indication of what codex are capable of doing here and how we can generate the forms in the future, even for your discipline. So if you're a specific discipline that doesn't have a form yet, you're more than welcome to contact codex about this. But do remember, there will be uh, development required and we need to uh, contact you and be in contact with you and how this process is going to work, how long it will take, and if this is specifically to you, there might be even cost involved to generate this kind of forms in the future. It's not something that can quickly be enabled, so we will need time to do this in the future for your requirements. So I'm going to start with general examination. And the, the reason for this is this is a very nice form to show you, indicate to what we are capable of in this. And uh, um, just just make sure that, from your, uh, that you inform your FCL what you will need for your type of discipline. So the moment I want to use this, I just click now on this general examination button 
The moment I click on it, it starts here active forms on the right hand side in a yellow. So I'm still busy with this form. Once I'm done, this form should be green. Then it tells me that I've completed this form. And also if you look at your booking and you, you remember there's a C there, now it will turn, turn to yellow. The moment I complete this form, it will turn to green. So whoever is the, the technician or doctor or therapist involved, please make sure that you always complete your form when you're done. So my general examination is now active here on the right hand side. It's yellow, so it means I'm busy with it. Now to the left hand side, I go to physical examination. And also just a quick reference to make sure always you're on the right patient. If there's more than one dependent on this file, please confirm you're always on the right patient. Complaint, here I can say what is wrong with the patient, for instance. He's got uh, a flu. For instance, here I can make any, any specific notes I want to do. And this is where the nice features come into good is I can upload any images. So for flu, this will not work, but let's say it was a burn, burn wound, for instance. And now I can click on add image and I can actually take a photo of the wound if I'm using a tablet in that sense. I can upload it if it was saved somewhere else uh, or I can use my actual smartphone, my cell phone as an external camera and upload photos from, from that camera. So it just depends on the discipline you are. You can use this in many different ways, even taking your phone and taking an image of a printout or a result on a screen uh, to actually upload it into your clinic, especially if you're moving in a hospital environment from different equipment to different equipment. It's a nice feature to actually use your phone to quickly take images from certain equipment results and upload it as clinical information. There will be other ways of doing it in different forms, it's just to show you what we are capable of doing in that sense. Once you've up uploaded, you just click on save. And also, once you've uploaded that image, you can actually edit that image and make markers on that image to indicate specific points that's a problem. Very nice feature for uploading photos and actually editing that photos by making marking it. Now I will just fill in my necessary settings. Uh, for instance, if I put in the 120, it will turn red because there's no way it should actually be that high. So we do have some... Um, uh, basic fundamental um, knowledge of certain uh, uh, settings and rates and determine whether you actually are filling in wrong information. Blood pressure, medication, respiratory, temperature, saturation, pulse rates, weight. So I can put in this as 58 and the height is 142, so BMI of 28. Smoker, yes. So we also calculate this. This is very nice for our GP environment, a nursing environment, or other. Uh, specialists might not need us, it just depends again on your discipline. Side room investigation, so here we can put in the glucose, the urine tests, all that information that is in a urine test, we can even show what is positive, what is negative, what is the results, so they can quickly be added, we can say whether it's HIV negative, pregnant, no, malaria, no, and again that is loaded, remember I need to complete here at the top when I'm done, but I'm still part of the first section now we get to the jackal jaundice dehydration yes no if you did not check this you will not tick it if you check dehydration and it's no dehydration you mark it as green it's all good if something's wrong you click it again it will change to red and then you will put in his dehydrated blah blah and, and as you need this information you will load it once you've completed these sections and I see the next one is review systems then I will go back to the top and complete that section now I go to review of systems and this is just to show how powerful GoodX will be and can be depending on your discipline. Now for instance I can go to musculoskeletal and I can decide yes the problem is he's got a burn wound but where does he have a burn wound and it's on his body and it's on his arm so I can select that arm I can even click on edit and I can go and mark that specific area and I can go say save. So this is how we can upload any physical documents in the future over time into the GoodX structure for you as a specific discipline and you can just edit and load that information and if it's something specific under under head um, I can mark that if I click on it again and it's red I can make specific notes if there's some other places where this has happened with the patient respiratory cardio ENT so I go to ENT and I go for instance to ears 
the moment I click on ears, we have MM pictures, and you can actually see certain pictures of the eyes, the ears, left, right, and make your notes accordingly as you require it. But every time you click on edit, I can make specific um, notes on that image, even free text or markup in red or yellow, but it doesn't matter colors, and load the information as I require it. If it did not work with any specific section, I just skip it. Again, go to the top when I'm done and complete that section if I've loaded. If I do not use anything there, just complete the section by just putting in nothing and just complete it if you don't want to use it for any further purpose. Diagnosis and plan. This is just also to show you that here we can start the whole billing process. Just depends on you as, as a discipline. We can build this into any form at the end of the day. But the, the diagnosis and plan is to help our doctors to decide what is the diagnosis. Okay, it's got hypertension. Okay, yes, how am I going to deal with this? And then we can load a macro that we call a clinical procedure and say, okay, but if it's this kind of uh, hypertension, you need to get this kind of medication or I need to build these kind of codes. If I'm using stitching as an example, in the stitching here in the clinical procedure, I can ask, okay, what type of stitch, stitch, stitching is this? Is this a high level, a low level, 0300, 0301? Uh, am I using a 3 mil syringe or a two, uh, 5 mil syringe? Am I using an 18 gauge needle or a 21 gauge needle? Am I using gloves, small, medium, large? Am I using a specific gauze, size, web calls? The idea of this clinical procedure is to guide you as a technician treating provider, doctor, to set up the coding so we can get to the point where we just say add to invoice or even generate a script. Quick and easy billing for the doctors, quick and easy billing for scripting or set up for scripting in the end of the day. Then the outcome is also the, the, just dependable on whether you want to use this. Is the patient admitted to a doctor? Has been transferred to a hospital? Is the sick note complete? Is the script complete? Is there a follow-up that needs to take place? And what is the outcome of the note? Again, fill in what is required. If you do not need this information, you just complete that section and just move along to the next phase. Now I've completed all my sections and then they will be a finalized all stages. That's obviously a quick way of just closing all marketing all is completed. Um, you will see a lot of them at certain buttons. If you're using the Halysis, for instance, you can go to the Halysis flowchart form. Once you open it up, that's your event. If you are that kind of discipline, it will fill in HAD ID number with the referral doctor. When did you start with the Halysis, for instance? Um, and when does it end? Or just click on now. Time ended, and the time was then, let's say, 12.50. Uh, what is the diagnosis? Is it diabetic? Yes. What is his allergies? And then uh, you can put in the measurements for that, the age again, dialysis time, the frequency, and just fill in as your pre-dialysis, pre-weight assessment, pre-vascular access, pre-assessment. And as you can see, you fill in what you require. Hourly assessment, so here I will fill in every hour to see the changes or settings on this. Uh, anemia management, even to the point where we can add another photo and uh, post vital signs until we end up to post this infection. Fill in as required, and when you're happy with all the information filled in, then you go back to the top again and click on complete that form. Now you will see the Halysis flowchart changed to green. I have completed that form. So now I can go to any other functions that I require. So that's typically when I start my medical history is my first option, depending on you as your discipline type. So GP will think to start with a general exam or a specialist, or a specialist will start with a quick note. Now, if you do not want to fill in any advanced forms like this dialysis flowchart, you can use your quick note. A quick note is a quick, easy type upload photos, documents for clinical notes. So although we say quick note, that's just a, a quick way of doing our clinical notes. That's why we call it a quick note. So once you click on it, you will see there's a routine checkup for Mr. Naidu that you can change to anything you want and upload and text as you need it. Add image will again give you the option to take an image of something uh, or with your phone and then upload it into this clinical note 
or you can actually set PDF file, choose file and upload any document that you want to attach to this quick note, like a specific report that deals with this. Uh, dialysis, for instance, there's certain printouts. You can take an actual image of that printout or ask uh, the center to email that for you by scanning it and email it to your email address and then you can upload it into your notes by choosing choose file option. And then you can attach that result into your quick note. It's a quick and easy way of making sure that all your paperwork, manual physical papers, are scanned and emailed and attached into your clinical notes. Then once you've done that, again complete it, and then you do look look at the other options you might have in the system for, for what you need. Um, we have pathology. So in a pathology, what we mean with this is a pathology request. So you must um, uh, set up this with GoodX pre prehand if you want to, to request blood tests on, on your patients. You can do this electronically by setting up your provider in GoodX with your path code and then you can select what type of tests must be performed or what tests you want to perform a blood test on this patient. Once you've completed this form, this request will go through to PathCare and Path uh, Lancet or Framark if not electronically. So you can still give them a manual form or print this form out and give it to the patient. They go to the pathologist. Uh, once I go to the pathologist, they just import this information from us into their system, they do the test and the result will be sent to the doctor or you as practice via a task that will be linked automatically back to the patient. In certain cases, you might need to relink it or link it to the right patient depending on the references we get from the pathology. So the idea is your path care your pathology request becomes electronically and you get your result electronically back from the medical aid, uh, from the, the pathologists. It makes it easier for that process. It just depends again on discipline if you want to do this. If I've loaded this pathology report now here in the right hand side, it's yellow and I feel I'm not going to do this anymore, then I can just simply delete that clinical event form and I say OK and it will take it off the list. So once you have uploaded any of these documents, and I will get to this also now, this is where we get to the clinical history. That's why it's so important if you, if you upload any of these events into the system, you upload any of your results into your clinical notes. Then when we go to the clinical history, there's options where you can mail it. But also, as you can see, as you fill in this dialysis flowchart, for instance, at any time you will see there's a print option and an email option. So I can physically download that PDF to my computer and then you will see it will open up as a PDF and once you open it up it's a PDF with all those settings, measurements filled in and because it's a PDF, out of the PDF you can attach it to your normal email um, as a document because this is now saved on your downloads folder in, on your computer. So that's the download option. Otherwise, you can just print it as a PDF directly or whatever you would like to do with it in that sense. Uh, otherwise, you can directly email it from here by clicking on the email button for the dialysis form. I can specify where do I want to email it to, so this could be the patient. Or you can even now specify the medical aid's email address here, and then your subject, and then your body and it automatically attach that dialysis flowchart as a PDF. And you just email it directly to the medical aid from here. At any stage, you can go uh, to the clinical history and open up it from there and email it again to a, a medical aid or patient who ever requires, or even a doctor or specialist that requires your dialysis form or any clinical form for that matter. So, in other words, you can, while you fill in the form, complete it, the moment you've completed it, you can immediately download it to your local computer, attach it into your normal Outlook, or you can just simply click on the email button and put in the, the, the specialist, sur surgeon, medical aid email address and immediately just mail it to them directly after you've captured your clinical form. Okay, um, then, um, 
If I've done now my general examination, I start with my medical history, I've done my general exam or my dialysis flow chart. So if you're dialysis, you must probably only do the dialysis flow chart. Maybe a quick note if you want to make other notes only for you that you want to see on this patient for other reasons. But like as you can see on the dialysis flow chart form, there's a lot of places where you can fill in specific notes depending on what you're dealing with in that sense. Save your complete that form and email it or print it or download it as you require it. Okay, so now that I've done my form in the sense of my dialysis or general examination and I've done my quick note and I've uploaded my photos or any other documents that is required for that, now I can add any other documentation. We call this the PDF report um, that can be also accessible from your library. The PDF report allows you to attach any other results that comes to you in an email format. But that format must be PDF. So if you receive a doc or a referral letter from someone, you must first save this as a PDF and then you can upload it with the PDF report function. So any blood results or any other results from any other discipline out there that you receive your email, you can also attach into this clinical history by doing the PDF report. Okay, then I'm going to end off here with your sick note and scripts. So the next one is the script. So just depending on also the discipline you will be, you'll be going to using scripts. From a dialysis uh, aspect, I don't think there's a lot of scripting that will take place there. But from my GPs and specialists, definitely there will be scripts. So to do a script, you will go to the script uh, event or select it out of the library again. Select it, it will open up, and because I've done the general examination for hypertension, it already pulled that into my system, so I know this is hypertension patient, or I can upload the hypertension script directly from my chronic condition that I've loaded here at chronic diseases, hypertension, and there I could see it's a microdol that I've linked to that essential hypertension in his medical history, so I can just quickly now tell Goodex, oh, okay, so I'm going to give him another script. So just load to me is MyPredol, and immediately the MyPredol is loaded as a script item. So now I can add to this script by just clicking on the plus, and I decide, okay, but I also want to give this patient Panado, and I can just simply load it. No sign uh, signata or directions, you need to manually specify that. So you can do the quick way by putting TDS or BD and the system will automatically import it uh, in that sense. Or you can manually type it out. One tablet three times a day. Or you can do the more accurate way by expanding the script option and select in the mornings with meals how many it's orally, frequently, and the day supplied. You can also manually set out that signata slash uh, directions. And if you mark this as not substitutable, it means the pharmacy can't give any other medication except for what you have specified here. As I load these items, I can mark any of these items as a favorite. This little green heart here, it means it saves this as a favorite microdol. The reason why I do this is to exactly actually save the directions for how do I take this medication. So this helps you that you don't need to fill in every time again the diagnosis slash uh, uh, meal relationship and frequency, in other words, the directions or signata. It saves it as a favorite and you can quickly access it any time out of the system. Also from here, I can save this whole script now as a new macro. So I know every time I'm dealing with a, a hypertension patient, I always will give them a microdol and panada depending on their condition. But this will be one of my, my macros that I can quickly easily load microdol and panada with these signatures quickly with a few clicks into the system, making the scripting very easy and very fast with a few clicks in the end of the day. So once I've loaded all these items, and as I load them, now we can go to our drug interaction checker. And this is very important if you do scripting, uh, to make sure that the medication that I give my patient does not clash with one another, and doesn't uh, uh, cancel out the effects that I want on this patient for that medication. So the moment I click on that drug interaction checker, I will be able to see the interactions. If it's in red, it tells me there is a bit of a problem. 
and it will show me that this is duplication of my medications. Uh, is there a reason why you're doing this? I can also click on the side effects and it will show me for the hyperdol and panado what might be the side effects of this medication. And even we can show you here the directions on how you need to give this medication or use this medication on the patient and how they need to take it. So this is a very nice tool to actually show you and guide you for whoever is doing the actual scripting on how you should uh, uh, script this medication to the patient, how they should take it and what effects might influence the patient later and how the different medication will influence one another at the end of the day. Very important for whoever is using this to use that drug interaction checker. And that's it. If there is certain medication or items that you need to build but it's a consumable O201, you can always access it with include consumables. Now I've loaded all my items with the plus. If I made a mistake, I can just compress the minus to delete it and to set up all those items. I can make an additional note and here the doctor or person doing the script can sign it and we can save it and then we can again print out the script for the patient or email it to the patient if it is required to do that. Once I'm done again with this script, I'm going to say complete or when I actually do click on print, it will also auto complete that script. Now that becomes history on the patient's file. And then I can also generate a sick note. Also again, depending on whether you're a GP or a specialist or what type of discipline, you can generate a sick note. From here, it will import my patient's details. There's no previous sick notes, it's only today. What is my hypertension? Because I did a general exam, it auto imports my hypertension because I've already done this on the patient. And there's a script for the patient. So here I can put in my diagnosis displayed and it means Whatever I put in here will override the general chosen diagnosis. So if I do not want to show the employer exactly what is wrong with this patient here, I can type in text, he was just sick or whatever I need to do to, 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 to protect my patient's privacy in that sense. Then my date of my treatment will be today. The patient will be absent from today till next week the first. So the system will calculate five days. When is the follow-up date? It's going to be the third and uh, in my opinion this patient is unfit for work and again a signature can be done or the doctor just simply prints it out whoever and signs it or under physical paper again this can be mailed or uh, downloaded to the to the computer and attached them to any emails or printed out as necessary please do not click on the lock button at all that lock means nobody will be able to access this again in the sense of editing it. So once you lock it, it cannot be unlocked. So that is in very rare circumstances that you will click on the lock button. In any of our clinical forms, be very careful when you do click on the lock option. Okay, so when this is done again, complete your form. Everything is completed. As you can see on the right hand side, I've done now my medical history there at the left hand uh, in the middle top. The right hand side, my general exam is completed, it's green, my dialysis is completed, it's green, my quick note is completed, my script is completed, and my sick note is completed. Now I can save and close, and it will take me back to the diary. Once I get back to the diary, I can see now the C is green, all my clinical notes are finalized. If it were yellow, or orange in that sense, it means you've started a, a sick note or a clinical event and you did not complete that event. So please always make sure that all your C's here for clinical scenarios are green, tells you and whoever is looking at this book that you did complete all your clinical events. So, so now the patient, for instance, comes back a week later and now I go to clinical history first. Before I start a new event, I first go to clinical history because I want to see what has happened on this patient up till today. So immediately when I open up this clinical history, my warning pops up that says, oh, this patient is very allergic. We set this up on my medical history. So an important note, patient is very allergic. And here on the right hand side, I open up the plus and immediately I can just quick see a quick history on this patient again. Uh, yes, he's allergic to penicillin, he's got hypertension, he's on Mipradols, and he's not smoking, but he, do, he does exercise every twice a week. Patient is, though, very allergic. 
Now I can see here a list of today's date, 28th of the 3rd, and I can see all the events that was loaded on the clinical side in this patient. I've got a script, a sick note, a general exam, a dialysis flowchart, and a quick note. By just clicking on it, it will open up and I can quickly see the basic set out of that script. By clicking on it again, it will close. If I go to my sick note, I can quickly see when was the sick note generated, for what time, and what was wrong with the patient. The general exam will show me quickly the most important stuff that was marked. What was his BP, his, his um, uh, BMI, his negative HIV, negative malaria, and he was dehydrated when he was here the first time. Also on the dialysis flowchart, when the moment I click it open, it should show me the basic scenarios that I've entered. If I want to uh, close it again, go to quick note and I will see my basic notes. If I want to see more detail on a specific option, let's say the general exam, if I click on view, it will show me more information as I've entered that information with pictures and notes and everything. And obviously if I do click on print and email, it will show me the full report with your logos and headers and everything will be on that report and email. So the same for my dialysis form. Um, if I do fill in the details and I do click on view, it should show me a bit more information on the form that was completed. And then if I want to see the full form, then I will go to print and actually generate a PDF for that specific form. Okay, and at any stage, you can see here's an email button. You can email this event to someone else like the medical aid for instance by just clicking on dialysis immediately i can just go and email this directly to the medical aid so you could email this when you generated the dialysis form or any of the events or you can email this immediately uh, or a week later or two weeks later when you go into the clinical history also a very nice feature if you have good eggs in the future depending on the practice we're dealing with the the, 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 the discipline over time if you do a lot of these general examinations on your patients we will be able to plot a graph on his BMI, his uh, blood pressure, and all that kind of information. Um, there might be possibilities to expand this in the future, but again, uh, we need to discuss this with every discipline as we work with you guys from there. Okay, so this is all my events, and this event will grow and grow and grow. Every time when you go into your clinical history, you will see who was the treating provider. So if you're doing dialysis or certain treatments, the person doing the treatment will be shown here if there's more than one person. That's why it's so important to load them in the system. And we can see a lot of information from here. If I want to go to clinical case again for today, there's nothing stopping me to clicking on clinical case. Or I want to go to clinical history. If I want to go to the medical history, just click on the necessary tabs and the system will jump you to where you want to be. If you're done with the screen, you can just simply close it. And make sure you saved anything if you have done any changes and you will be back on the diary grid so you can see all the patients that was treated for the day. So in a dialysis environment or certain practices, we don't care about the time. We still want to know you've seen seven patients, so there should be seven patients on the list. That's why we just use the new booking function for that. Uh, if you've seen eight patients, there should be eight patients. And I can see immediately which events is done and what documents are still outstanding. And I can now also pick up from here what I still need to do. So all these guys are still uh, green and ready. We went into the clinical and we loaded all the necessary clinical information. So you start with your medical history, then you go to your, your general examination or your dialysis form, your quick notes. Remember there is a PDF report upload where you can upload any results that's in a PDF format and that's very important if a doctor sends you a referral up later or you get any documentation from anywhere, you can only upload it with the PDF report if it's a PDF format, otherwise you can upload it into your quick notes. Okay, and please make sure that you know how to email it directly from your clinical history or when the moment you complete your form. Please make sure from your FCL that you have your easy events loaded. This is all the ones that you're gonna be using every day. If you only use the dialysis form, then just make sure the dialysis form is loaded on the right hand side. Otherwise, you always need to go and select it out of your library. 
please make sure you're on the right patient when you do this again it's very important uh, that that is done if you uh, are treating more than one family member so there's two or three people from the same family there is ways by clicking here in the top left corner on the plus to actually quickly uh, manage two or three patients from the same membership it just depends again on your discipline on how accessible this will be and how you will need it in the future um, I think we've covered everything here that is important. Remember there's also Discovery Health ID. So if you're using the, the Discovery Health ID system from Discovery, it's a website. This is just a link to that website. So when you click here, it will take you to the Discovery website, put in your registration information, and you can quickly view that information from there. Okay, and uh, I think that's it for now. Um, our next session is going to be our billing and billing corrections. And this is going to start at 12.30 at this moment. And then we will continue with our billing and billing corrections. Please just make sure that when, again, you go to your uh, learning center, that you go through this clinical history. Just click on the options here and it will show you the options um, and the manuals and the view of how to use it. Remember, there is also a custom form that we can load for you on site and you can design your own quick form for what you want to do. If you feel that if you're using, for instance, dialysis, it's a too long form, um, you can design a quick, easy, step-by-step -step form that will only capture the base information that you require. That form then obviously can be saved and you can upload it, but it's very basic. The idea is just to help you capture fields very quickly in that sense. It will look like a lot like this doctor note, for instance, as an example. You can put in history and it's just a text field, you fill in your history, you put in your examination, you fill in your examination, you, put in, you choose your diagnosis, you select your diagnosis, you put in your treatment and you type in your treatment. So the custom form is a nice way of taking a quick form and expand it a bit so you can fill in necessary sections that you want to complete. Very nice option to look in at. So please make sure from your FCL that if you do require a custom form for that, we can quickly help you set that up. If you want to take it further with GoodX, please let the FCL know so we can discuss further future options on that for you. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, I've covered everything for you for, for the uh, clinical information. If there's any questions, just put it onto the chat for us so we can quickly run through it again for you if it's necessary. And then we will start again at 12.30 with the billing and billing corrections. Thank you.